Hello and welcome to this edition of Capture. I'm Faith Vandervoort. Last Tuesday evening, all of America watched as votes for the next president of the United States filed in. While polls leading up to the election day nearly unanimously predicted a Clinton victory, things quickly turned on election night as Trump won key swing states on his way to the White House. The day after the election, I headed out to Cougar Walk to hear your thoughts. The crazy election cycle is over and America has spoken. Donald J. Trump will be the 45th president of the United States of America. The media has been portraying various different reactions, but I came to East Campus to hear yours. It was interesting watching the live feed. Um, I got out of class at 8 and I went straight to my brother's house and we were all watching it just on our iPhones watching and our like jaws dropped when we lost pen when we lost Pennsylvania, sorry, um, when Pennsylvania switched to Republican. So in regards to the presidential election, honestly, I went into it thinking at the beginning of the day that Trump wasn't going to win. Um, and so when I got out of his adventures and saw the news that he had won and kind of watched it on the news, it was it was shocking. But it was also, um, I, felt, I felt comfortable in knowing that he won. I think that However, it's like a, a point of division or hurt and pain for a lot of people on campus, and that's important to keep in mind. I personally am not happy how the election turned out, but um, we are a democracy, and I think we are super, super polarized, and we do need to unite as America. It is important to be like, okay, I accept it. It happened, and we need to accept it, and we need to unite as a country and see now as a party and as a democracy, how can we move on and how can we achieve what, you know, as America we need to do. A lot of people were surprised that Trump won because, like you said, the polls predicted that Hillary would. Um, I think I'm excited to see what happens next. I think that it's cool that both uh, candidates kind of came together and called for unifying the country. We'll see if uh, that can happen. There's some pretty deep uh, divisions and rips, rifts, so I'm hopeful to see uh, what plays out in the next couple months. On Tuesday, November 8th, Donald Trump defeated Hillary Clinton in the race to the White House. Trump made history by turning historically blue states like Pennsylvania, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Michigan red. At 11.45 Pacific Standard Time, Clinton called Trump to concede from the race after Trump hit the 270 benchmark on the Electoral College. Not long after, President-elect Donald Trump and his Vice President-elect Mike Pence addressed the nation with their families by their sides. Since the election, Donald Trump and his wife Melania met with President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama. President Obama promised to do everything he could to make Trump's transition to the White House a smooth one. On Sunday, President-elect Donald Trump named Reince Priebus, the current chairman of the Republican National Committee, as his White House Chief of Staff. Last night was your last chance to see the latest supermoon occurrence, a phenomenon during which the moon was the closest it has been to Earth since January of 1948. Supermoons occur due to the moon's elliptical orbit, bringing it closer to Earth. When a full moon coincides with the moon's closest point to the Earth on its orbit, a larger, brighter moon is the result. At its closest point to Earth, the moon appeared up to 14% larger and 30% brighter than it is at its farthest. The next time it will occur won't be until November 25th, 2034. Last Tuesday, the School of Business and Management's Zoo Ventures competition held semifinal presentations that narrowed down the top 12 down to the top 7. Here's a look at what Zoo Ventures is and how it's helping students here at APU. Zoo Ventures gives the opportunity for entrepreneurs to pitch their ideas and possibly win $15,000 to help transition their innovative concept from paper to reality. These ideas included everything from jewelry to clothing to mobile apps. The top 12 presented their ideas to a panel of experienced business entrepreneurs who gave them insightful feedback on their business plan. We're talking to business professionals, finance people, entrepreneurs, angel investors on a weekly basis and just getting their perspectives and ideas has really helped us as a business grow. Uh, by having to do these presentations each week and thinking through these issues, we're constantly taking care of uh, things we need to do should we launch our business at any point. These individuals coming from diverse educational backgrounds all subscribe to the approach that doesn't merely answer the questions at hand, but rather questions the way we ask them all together. Uh, so the vision for Zoo Ventures is really to be able to support 
entrepreneurs and people who want to start startups with a bunch of resources to be able to provide for that vision, for their vision. So it's, it's, it's very practical. It's not about just going into a classroom and learning, it's about practicing it. So our entire tagline is um, build, dream, build, launch. And that's what it's all about. It's like being very practical in your education towards movement forward. APU created Zoo Ventures to inspire the good that can be found when today's entrepreneurs turn their focus toward kingdom values, the pursuit of excellence, and the commitment to bottom line sustainability. Zoo Ventures helps us get through all the hard work so that when we go out into the real world, we've already thought through a lot of these problems and we're empowered and have advice and feedback in order to best position our company among the market. Going into it, we definitely had no um, idea how to start a business or what that even looked like. and. Um, it's really, it's really nerve-wracking just to sort of kind of get everything together and just, you know, see what, what it's going to look like. Um, we sort of compare it to, um, it's like a group project every single week, but after you give your group project, you sort of just get roasted by a team of people who are a lot smarter than you. So it's definitely very challenging and it has, um, has pushed us and it's, it's like having a whole other class in our schedules that um, we didn't account for. But um, from where we started to where we are now, we've seen just incredible growth and, you know, I have a, a huge understanding of our market and um, of uh, what our product is and so we've definitely come a long way. The top seven will be presenting in the Upper Turner Campus Center tomorrow night at 7 p.m. where the winner will be awarded the $15,000 prize. This past week Starbucks released their new red holiday cups to the public. Starbucks welcomes 13 new designs to bring the holiday spirit into the hands of their customers. The cups are designed by artists from six different countries. Last year, there was a controversy surrounding their red cup design for the holiday season. Some Christians were upset that the Starbucks cups did not have Christmas imagery on them. This year, they took on a new design. According to Starbucks creative director, Dina Blevins, we were surprised and inspired by the amount of incredible art submitted by our customers. The designs were beautiful, expressive, and engaging. We quickly realized that there was potential to use the customer created art for our holiday cups. That's all we have for this edition of Capture. Tune in next week for more news. Until then, be sure to like our page on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at APU Capture.